<laughs> We're in St. John Pied de Port. It's really not that cold. These are our first steps on the Camino de Santiago. kilometers to go. Hi there. <laughs> Camino. Yeah, you're doing the Camino. Hopefully Joe's not just running up the mountain, he's stopping to appreciate this. That would be nice. Well, I lost Joe. He's way up ahead somewhere. But that that's uh, what I expected. So uh, we got on the road about 6 a.m. when it was dark and now the sun's coming up. So uh, this is the time you want to be starting the Camino. Get out the door by about 6 a.m. Uh, at least in the springtime. Ooh. So you get to see this. It's going to be really nice today. It's supposed to be uh, up in the 80s Fahrenheit. What is that, like 30, 25, something like that. Uh, but uh, we got out the door bright and early. Uh, Joe was sound asleep. I practically had to sit on him to wake him up. Um, I've been awake since about uh, midnight. Uh, but I went to went to bed early. I went to bed about eight o'clock because we're still on California time so uh, about nine hours off I think is what it is um, and somebody in the room was really snoring like really loud all night long so uh, they can't help it but the first few nights you gotta just get used to it and um, kind of part of the process of um, you know the first usually about the first week and I think it's more if you're on a diff you know really different time schedule like people come from Asia or like me I come from over from the west coast of the United States and and uh, so you you're losing a lot of sleep so you're mentally really tired and then uh, you know you force yourself to get up because you gotta get on the road make sure you can get a bed and um, and uh, so you're mentally tired and you're 
body is just sort of going through the motions of walking and and uh, um, you know that's kind of the first week it's just sort of getting acclimated and then uh, you know the after that you sort of get on schedule so anyway we got a tough climb here Made it to the top and I think the Orison is right ahead look at that Amazing. I got a message from uh, Joe, a text message that he's made it to the Orison. So uh, he's about, uh, I don't know, he got about 30 minutes in front of me. So uh, I've got about maybe one more kilometer or slightly under that to get there. Um, and hopefully he'll still be there waiting for me. Uh, we'll take our shoes off for a bit, have a coffee or something. And then uh, that's about a third of the way through. It's a uh, pretty steep climb, um, you know, so it takes uh, a while to get up that first section. Um, it's, I would equate it to, uh, you know, climbing for, it's, it's basically eight kilometers to the Orison and seven of those kilometers is like climbing hills in San Francisco. They're just really steep, um, for much of the way. So, um, but then once you get to the Orison, it sort of, uh, flattens out a little bit and, uh, looks basically like this. So, um, for the rest of the day. So we'll do about another, I don't know, uh, 17 kilometers maybe from the Orison and and uh, it'll be uh, a nice easy grade there's a couple of spots where you got to climb a bit but uh, and then the last several kilometers is downhill um, and if you are doing uh, the Camino for your first time uh, when you get to the very top there's a kind of a sculpture up there these are horses <laughs> climbing away uh, when you get to the very top, um, there's like a sculpture up there, and uh, the easy way is going off to the right. Uh, it's a road. Hey there, buddy. Hey there. Yeah, you got flies on your face. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. So, yeah, you get to the top and um, there's two ways to go. You can take the really steep path through the forest or you can go to the right and stay on the road. And, and I go to the right because it's, it's, uh, it's about like what I'm on here. And um, it's not that much longer. It's just a smoother grade. It's easier. And uh, you can go a lot faster on it. So that's it. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've got... Um, Maybe it's right around the corner here. Uh, yeah, there's the Orson. You can see the umbrellas. So, hopefully Joe's waiting for me there. It is windy up here on top of the mountain. Holy cow.
go. Black one on the rear. Oh. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, impressed with Joe. He's it's his first trip out of the country. Um, and I was uh, a little concerned that he would have uh, trouble adjusting to the, um, you know, to the dorm rooms. Uh, you know, I wanted to uh, have him experience that and get him out of his shell a little bit, you know, and um, out of his comfort zone. But that, he doesn't really have a comfort zone, apparently. He just, you know, jumps right in and uh, he's speaking what sounds like fluent French. He's been studying languages since he was about five years old, you know, just on his own, and he, he just sort of takes the unit, sort of plays around with it, and um, he's never really had anywhere to use it. And uh, so we went to a bakery yesterday, it was yesterday, and um, the, uh, and so we were just going to order some bread and pastry, and he just rattles off this sentence in French, like a full sentence, not not just the name of the thing, but he actually, you know, had full sentence structure in there, and it sounded perfect, and the uh, person didn't uh, hesitate, they just, and then they spoke French back to him, and so was, I was really impressed with that. He's, uh, yeah, he's quite a traveler, he's always been, both, both my kids, Alex and Joe, Hi, Alex, <laughs> if you're watching this video. Um, the, uh, they've both been, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm sitting here thinking uh, this morning, I don't think I've ever heard either one of them ever once complain about anything. You know, they just uh, sort of go through life and accept whatever. They've never complained or, or had any tantrums <laughs> when they were little. They just, uh, yeah, they just get along, and uh, which is great. And Joe's uh, sort of just getting along and seems to be enjoying uh, this trip so far and the process of, you know, finding beds and the challenge there. And, and he's enjoying using his language skills. And uh, we're going to be in Spain here, so uh, he'll have to switch over to Spanish, which he's probably better at than French. Um, so he'll get to use some of that. And then maybe after the trip, after the Camino is over, we might head down to Portugal and he'll get to speak some Portuguese. Uh, so that's another language he's studied. So anyway, it's uh, this is a good trip for him. He's he's doing really well, sleeping fine in the bunk beds and doesn't have any problem, you know, with the sort of communal bathrooms and and just seems to be. Yeah, just, just uh, totally fine with it, and uh, I could see him do it, coming back and doing this on his own without any trouble at all. So, uh, anyway, ooh, I'm out of the forest and heading that way. And we're gonna have one more, one more steep uh, climb uphill, and then it's all downhill into Ronson Spiders. And hopefully, I'll be finished here in an hour or so. I'm thinking. I can see Ronces Valles, which is right there. And I think that's that's Burgette out there. Well, I'm almost there. Um, I got about two kilometers to go. And uh, I can see the town down there. My knees are hurting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's uh, gonna be a painful trip if, uh, if they don't improve, but, um, but I'll get through it. Morning guys, uh, it's uh, day two and I'm in the uh, town of Burgette, I guess how that's pronounced. Um, I'll show it to you, it's kind of a narrow street, barely a sidewalk and uh, some water running down the gutter there. Um, so this is a town that's kind of their claim to fame is that Ernest Hemingway stayed here for a period of time when uh, he was doing research on uh, his book. I believe it was the book, The Sun Also Rises. 
Um, I'm sure he spent more time here than that, but that's kind of what the, good morning. Um, that's kind of what the uh, story is anyway. So this is just a small town. There's a little church in the middle of town. Um, and uh, the goal here is to not get run over by cars because there's really not much of a walking lane. scenery wow what a day the weather is absolutely perfect just can't believe we got this kind of weather in early May um, as uh, springtime can be um, a little hit and miss here we're supposed to get some rain in a, in a couple of days at least that's what the forecast was when we were <coughs> making our uh, well, we didn't really plan it. We just hopped on, a, hopped on a plane a couple days earlier than we expected and then landed in Paris a couple days earlier than we expected. So uh, the climb over the mountain yesterday was challenging. I was talking about, uh, yeah, that first day, your body's not used to it and it uh, doesn't matter really how slow you go. It's going to be going to be a challenge. It's about 15 kilometers a fairly steep hill. Um, the last downhill section is only about five kilometers. Um, and uh, it's kind of steep going down. Even the road on the, the, you know, that you take if you go to the right uh, is uh, somewhat steep. And by that point, your knees are uh, shot. And so uh, it's a little difficult getting down. So my knees were in pretty bad shape last night. And, uh, but I'm, I'm walking okay. So as long as they loosen up during the day, um, I think I'll be okay. At the end of the day yesterday was in really bad shape, my right knee. Um, as I mentioned before, it's been uh, giving me problems for a few months now. Um, and uh, not sure what uh, the problem is. It just never really had it, had that problem before. It was really bad yesterday. It was swollen and really sharp pain. It's like walking on shards of glass in your knee. Uh, so, um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll just work itself out and that it'll go away if I, my weight's been up and, and hopefully as my weight drops while I walk, the, uh, my knee may 
uh, correct itself. Um, so I'm just kind of taking it slow and um, it's not too bad this morning. Swelling goes down overnight and it feels okay right now. I still feel it there, but but it's not uh, like what it was last night. So I'm able to walk today as long as I can walk. Um, the pain, you know, later in the day, is, if I can get most of the day without too much pain, um, I can I can sort of just tough it out um, at the end of the day when there's only a, sh a short way to go. Uh, but um, yeah, if it was really bad right off the bat, I would have probably uh, had to consider taking a taxi because um, I was really hobbling around last night. So, um, but yeah, right now it's not too bad. So if it if it's just like this and you know flares up and after the end of the day and but it's basically fine in the morning then I'll, I'll get through it just fine Puente de la Reina, and um, this is, uh, it's not a big city, it's sort of a small town, but medium, I guess maybe medium sized by Europe standards. Um, and at this, it's uh, got these narrow streets that sort of keep the sun from getting down and it stays nice and cool even though it was um, I guess it was about 20 25 degrees Celsius yesterday uh, when I looked at it which I think is is close to 80 uh, something in that range uh, yesterday but down here in this uh, street it was nice and cool so uh, but this is it this uh, town has uh, several streets 
like this, sort of running uh, parallel. And, um, and I think, uh, I think Joe's, Joe's probably, uh, he's getting ready to leave. I left him there. Uh, he walks so much faster than me, so it uh, makes more sense for me to take off earlier. Um, so the knee's feeling not uh, too terrible. In the mornings, it's generally not too bad. I can feel the uh, problem there. And, um, I'm gonna try to take it slow today. I don't think there's any real climbing. Um, today, yesterday was the one that sort of beat it up pretty bad because you climb up to Alto del Perdon and then you gotta come down the backside which is uh, pretty steep and, and slippery and rocky and and uh, so you're coming having to come down on it pretty hard um, yeah I, uh, y you know some people have suggested that I take a day off or a couple days off but uh, if it was just me by myself I would do that um, but uh, I'm uh, walking with Joe and um, some of these towns are so small there's not enough to uh, keep him entertained for a day and um, and to be honest I can I can manage so um, you know I just we just keep going if we get to a town that's big enough um, that uh, there's something to see you know like Burgos has a cathedral um, so we, we could probably get an apartment in Burgos um, you know, so that we can spread out our stuff and hang out and cook our meals and, and have some space that might be worth uh, stopping for a day uh, and taking a break. So, but Burgos is around day 10 and we're on, we're on day five right now. So it's a, it's a little ways off. Uh, so I'll manage, um, the, the other town that's a little bigger is Lagrano and, um, and uh, it, uh, I'm going to take a picture of it. Lagrania is a little bit larger, but um, I'm not sure it's worth uh, sticking around for. It's, um, it doesn't, uh, I don't believe it has a cathedral. It, I'm sure it has churches that are probably fine. Uh, mostly Lagrania people are just looking to, um, go out and hit the bars in the evening. It's got a, a little more of that to do. You know, bars and I guess tapas. Is that what we're serving here? Um, this is the uh, bridge that I think Puente de Lorena is uh, named for. So I'll get a snapshot of that. Um, and it's a uh, nice view. So, uh, yeah, nice day. It's, the air is really still. There's no wind today. So, beautiful bridge. <laughs> Seven a ball. So, uh, yeah, so yesterday was a struggle. It was hot and, 
and a long distance and and uh yeah my knee hurting it made it uh take a lot longer so i um, taking a lot of uh ibuprofen so uh it's not good for me but at least it, it allows me to walk so um so today we head to uh los arcos and um it's only about 21 kilometers so it's a short day um kind of 21 is kind of short 25 is normal and you know 28 to 30 would be considered a long day um but uh, yeah today's a short day and i'm probably almost not, i'm maybe a third of the way done so i've got about two and a half hours of walking left to do so um and it's still pretty early uh we passed uh the wine fountain um so i went and got my little gulp of wine and um joe's behind me somewhere uh, i'm just kind of i've been kind of letting him uh sleep in a little bit longer so we don't feel like we're constantly rushing and uh someone coming up behind me um so uh yeah so he's behind me but on his way he's probably probably 15 minutes behind me by now he's got to be catching up unless he took the other uh there was a split in the road one one way goes up into the hills and uh it's technically shorter but it's it's more hilly uh so with my knee i just took the flat way that's a little bit longer but um I'll show you the scenery here. So you got these cliffs way out there. And uh, farms, basically. So that's, uh, that's it. That's the news from the Camino. So here's an update on the shoes. Uh, these shoes are actually very comfortable, very nice. Uh, doing good, no blisters, not even a hint of a blister. And um, they're handling the trail just fine with the, with the tread. It's not a uh, real deep hiking boot type tread. It's just got a little extra traction that does just fine on this uh, type of ground. And um, I, we've already seen the kind of the most challenging terrain. Basically, the first day, there's a couple of sections that are kind of rocky and steep. And if you were going to have trouble with a shoe, uh, that would be where you'd have it. Um, also on the backside of Alto del Perdón. Uh, and it wasn't any problem at all. So these are very comfortable shoes. No blisters. My son, Joe is wearing the same shoe uh, in black and he feels the same way that they're just good comfortable shoes um, no uh, no uh, sharp spots hot spots nothing like that so um, I also was uh, sitting in a cafe earlier today and uh, ran into a group of Irish folk from Cork Ireland and I noticed one of the ladies was wearing the exact same shoe different color but same shoe and so I commented on it and she said she had gotten it gotten them on a recommendation from the guy at the uh, sporting goods store who happened to be an Olympic runner uh, and ran into I'm not sure which Olympics or what deep distances or details but <clears throat> they were uh, recommended by this uh, professional runner um, this, these exact shoes so Take that for what it's worth. The beds aren't that great at that place. Where do we stay? Uh, something, uh, um, Austria. Yeah, Albergue Austria. Um, and they do get kind of aggressive kicking you out in the morning. <laughs> she almost I paid for breakfast and then she said it's 7.30 and she like took my coffee away. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, they don't mess around getting you out of bed in the morning there, but, uh, the place is basically comfortable. It's pretty close to the center of town, and it wasn't uh, too bad. It was like 12 bucks a night 
12 bucks for the bed, so oh, we stayed there. It was good. And um, beautiful today. Uh, we're supposed to get some rain by this afternoon. Uh, we're on our way to Lagrano, and I've, you know, with my knee problems, I'm, I'm moving kind of slow. It seems to be manageable, though. Taking a lot of ibuprofen, and uh, that seems to be keeping it under control. And I iced it down for a long time last night, which seemed to help. So I'm going to keep doing that. Um, I went to the uh, pharmacist, this young guy who I've uh, rented an apartment in Los Arcos the last, or two of the three times I've been through there. Um, he's also the pharmacist in town. He's in his 20s. And I asked him about it. He says it sounds like pretty typical... Uh, um, tendonitis in my knee and he basically told me to do exactly what I'm doing take ibuprofen ice it down and try not to uh, be too aggressive with it so <laughs> hey Joe yeah. I just wanted to get you to turn around And uh, got divorced in 2016, and uh, by about 2018, I wasn't real sure what I was supposed to be doing anymore. Um, you know, so much of your uh, identity is based on, you know, having a family, being married with kids, and then suddenly that ends. And uh, you don't quite know really who you are anymore. So after a couple of years of sort of, you know, trying to adjust, you know, to suddenly being alone instead of having, you know, coming home from work and having, you know, your wife there and your kids, you know, the life in the house you've been, now you come home and you're just alone. Your kids are gone, you know, they're, you know, 18 years old or whatever. They don't want to spend time with you. Your wife didn't want to spend time with you anymore. Um, you know, it hit me really clearly right then that I'm going to work for the next 10 or 15 years. And then when I'm done, I'll be too tired to do anything. And, um, you know, after the experience with the divorce, you find, yeah, you can work for 20 years and in the end, you know, there's nothing left. And what do I want to do with my life at this point? Work another 20 years so that I can retire? You know, there's no way to earn back all the money I lost in the divorce, so, yeah, so then, so now what? So, uh, yeah, I bought my ticket to the Camino and, and uh, this is my fourth time now. So we're in Santo Domingo de la Calzada for their Millennium Celebration. And the whole town is coming out. We're right next to the church where uh, the chickens are housed. And uh, yeah, every, every street you look down, the whole city's 
coming this way, coming to gather. This is everybody rushing towards the church for the Millennium Celebration. They're all wearing red scarves. Let's say Millenario. <laughs> These, these are kind of typical uh, uh, Spanish type. Uh, you see these in, yeah. in a lot of towns. Some of, sometimes they're taller. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's go over, I'll get a picture of you with them. <laughs> shot old bridge uh, something like a thousand years old I think is what it said morning guys uh, got a pretty early start for this point in the Camino we left the left uh, the albergue at uh, 7 beautiful morning the weatherman was wrong Wrong. It's supposed to be raining. Uh, I think we'll get rain in the afternoon, but hopefully we'll get a bed. Uh, we left, um, uh, what was the town? Uh, Bellorado uh, Bel is what we left this morning. And um, Joe's uh, fighting off this uh, fever and sore throat. And I uh, was entertaining. For one brief moment, I said, are you gonna be able to walk tomorrow? More of a, more as a rhetorical question, I guess. And uh, he said, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't uh, take that as a good sign. Um, but he woke up this morning and I sort of tried to get him going and then he went back to sleep. And then um, I made him take some uh, Tylenol, some paracetamol. Um, and uh, and then a little while later, he looked a little more alert. So, um, yeah, he's uh, he's not a guy that complains, and he resists uh, playing the victim. He doesn't like you making a big deal about him being sick. He just says he's fine. And uh, so, so I kind of figured out that I could, you know. <laughs> sort of get him out of bed by saying, yeah, this is gonna be a difficult day for you. And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> so he's just, uh, yeah, gonna, gonna do it. Um, so he's up, he left just a little bit ago. I'm ahead of him, but he'll pass me here uh, at some point pretty quick. And um, so uh, we're headed to, we're not sure where we're gonna end up staying yet because uh, everything's booked everything that takes bookings is booked I've emailed and checked every site and um, 
everything is uh, full. As I mentioned before, it's very busy on the Camino right now. Everybody's got, you know, just this pent up energy to get out and do it. Um, the host of uh, the place I stayed last night, she said um, that June is actually a bit slower. So if you start in June, you may have a better time getting beds than in May. May, I think, is, is the uh, peak month at this time of year. So, uh, she said, uh, yeah, June is good. You don't really have to pre-book is what she was saying, but who knows, this is turning out to be a busy year. Um, maybe it'll be full of college student, students at that point or something. So, um, but yeah, so we're not sure where we're staying tonight. We're, the short walk today is to, is to San Juan de Ortiz. It's a de Ortega. No, San Juan de Ortega, I think is what it is. Uh, and uh, that's something like 21 kilometers, 22, 23, something like that. It's fairly short, uh, but it's literally a town of, it's just a tiny little, tiny little square. There's a municipal albergue and a church. And then there's, wow, look at that. <laughs> this is why we come. This is why we do this. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, so there's basically a municipal albergue with like 40 or 50 beds. Um, there's a little hotel, uh, a couple little hotels. Uh, those are booked up, so. Um, if we could get there early enough, there's a chance we could get one of the beds, or two of the beds, maybe. Um, I'm gonna try to push through. My knee's feeling okay. Um, it was feeling really good when I got out of bed, which is the first time in uh, in a long time that sorry, I'm fiddling in a long time that it's felt okay, and and then uh, it started to. Uh, hurt a little bit as I started walking and uh, I think it just needs to loosen up um, We've got tomorrow we walk to Burgos and we've got an apartment for two nights in Burgos um, So I'm gonna oh my God, look at this. Gotta take a picture of this Except it's got me in it, so it's not as good So, uh, uh, we got two nights in Burgos, and uh, I'm just going to keep uh, taking it easy on my knee, putting ice on it, and I think it's it's mostly healed. I can, I can walk. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but um, I was basically limping like, you know, like I had a prosthetic leg or something for the first week. Um, there was just no way to really bend it or put any uh, significant amount of weight on it. Just tendonitis and uh, never had to deal with it before, but I think it had to do with my weight got up out of control for a while. I don't know what that was about. And I, and I think I'm losing a bit of weight here. But um, I think with the extra weight and whatever toll that takes on your body and then maybe whatever was the source of the extra weight might have been uh, weakening my knees. And also, uh, when I get heavy, you know, my hips, I don't know if everybody else is the same way, but my hips don't move as well. So instead of striding or strolling, you sort of waddle along and it puts uh, extra, extra strain on your knees. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm looking, I'm taking pictures while I'm talking. But, uh, yeah, so I think it's just the twisting motion. It's my hips weren't uh, as, you know, flexible. My weight was up and uh, just tore up my knees. And uh, maybe as I lose weight, they'll strengthen again and, and I'll be fine. Normally, I'm a very strong uh, walker very aggressive and don't have any problems like that so um, it'll be good to get back in shape it's just so hard with uh, you know 
this is one of my one of the things I learned uh, on my first Camino it's really it's easy to offer help to everybody you meet everybody likes to help uh, it's really hard to accept help when it's offered and just like I was you know kind of coddling Joe a little bit this morning and he rebelled and rejected it you know it's uh, it's just hard to be the victim and um, you know so yesterday was uh, was a challenge um, or maybe it was yesterday or the day before uh, because I was having to stop and every person that walked by was like are you okay do you need help do you need a you know what <laughs> after the 10th person you know offering to call me a an ambulance you know when I'm normally a guy that's just charging the you know charging the hills it's hard it's it's hard to feel pathetic um, there's Joe Hey guys! <laughs> sitting in uh, the town of, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Ages, I um, guess, I guess, I guess, Joe says, and um, this is a uh, little cafe that um, sort of out of nowhere, you walk up after this last town where there's virtually no decent food, and you come to this cafe where this lady bakes the most incredible stuff, and uh, so Joe's having an empanada. Uh, ham and cheese empanada. I had pumpkin bread <laughs> for breakfast. I got an empanada to go. And um, yeah, they got all kinds of good stuff here. It's uh, kind of a welcome sight after days of not having decent, you know, decent food. So anyway. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Fred. Fred. Happy birthday to you. His name's, his name's Fred. Fred. Hi, Fred. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello, Fred. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> now I made it to made it to Burgos. There's the cathedral, and here's the the guy. The barnacle covered pilgrim. And now we just gotta find Joe. From Burgos, uh, we got checked into our place. This is the view. That's the cathedral. Um, last time I had the uh, the one right up there, which has a slightly better view, but uh, this one's all right. It opens up on the courtyard in front of the cathedral, so we've got this for two nights, and um, and it should be fine. This one had two beds; otherwise, I would have taken the other one. Um, so anyway, hey Dad, happy birthday, and. Uh, Hope you enjoy all the uh, birthday wishes from fellow pilgrims. So uh, there's where we stayed in this little white building in the unit uh, uh, right there. This is a better unit. It has a better view. So if you're staying in Burgos, those are ba not bad places to stay. Here's the cathedral. You kind of look out on the, this side of the cathedral. You get a nice sunrise. And... Um, place that looks interesting that I 
didn't bother to check is this uh, hotel here. It's got a good view with the windows, a little bit higher elevation looking out over the city, so maybe consider that one. That's uh, the Maison del Cid. C Cid, I think, yeah. Anyway, this is it. There's another hotel right there. This is really where you want to be. This is a good side of the cathedral. You get the sunrise, um, nice view, and uh, so it's kind of, uh, if you're looking at the map, it's to the west, I guess the left side of the cathedral. And uh, yeah, not bad. So, leaving Burgos, and uh, Burgos is not, well, this is actually not that bad, uh, but it's uh, not always the most pleasant walk when you leave a city, because uh, you're walking along the road with traffic and stuff. I didn't really walk anywhere. I walked to the decathlon store, which is about a mile and a half, like uh, two and a half kilometers, something like that, and uh, walked there and back. But other than that, didn't really do any walking. Um, just sort of uh, hung out at home. And I really thought that would have um, sort of gotten my knees back in shape. But I woke up this morning, they were just hurting. Uh, and it's in both knees now. So, um, the, uh, and then the bed was so soft. <laughs> The bed was so soft, my back was uh, kind of out. So, um, yeah, I got to make sure I'm on a firm, firm mattress. Otherwise, the you know you wake up and your back's all bent out of shape too. So, a lot of people go home at Burgos, uh, the, and the reason is that they either only had two weeks for vacation. So, a lot of people walk, <coughs> walk to Burgos, and then they'll come back maybe later, at a later date, and walk the rest or break it into thirds something like that um, but uh, oh, somebody wishing me Wayne Camino I thought she was telling me to get out of her way uh, so um, so a lot of people go home at Burgos and uh, because it's kind of the last city where you've got major transportation outlets and then uh, um, some people just simply don't want to do the Meseta because they've heard that it's boring. It's not boring. I've described it as being more subtle. The benefits of it are more subtle. And, you know, thoughts start to creep in. You know, you, you may be tired of being around other people. You're, you know, some people experience depression, uh, loneliness, homesickness. Hold on. Um, so... Those are all mental challenges, and uh, so uh, the Meseta is, is where you, you push through that. And, um, you know, for me, I, I, it hits me even now. It's in my fourth time here, and, and it still hits me. I, you know, woke up this morning going, I really don't want to walk today. I don't want to do this today. Um, so you just sort of... Uh, say, you know what, I'm going to do this one more day. And um, and then one more day after that, and then one more day after that. Each day you just do it one day at a time. And, um, and uh, of course, I've got Joe with me, so that's going to keep me uh, motivated to keep moving forward. And, um, and eventually um, you settle into the... Uh, energy this the routine and energy level of the meseta which is a little quieter slower paced and i say it's not boring it's just subtle the, so that's why i tell people it's important that you um do the you know that if you're looking for that obviously everybody's different if you're if you're looking for the full you know enjoyment and appreciation and the full spiritual realization of the camino it, it's kind of important that you do the whole thing and i don't think you get the same benefit necessarily by breaking it up that's not to say that some people are not capable of it's you know uh, you know of experiencing it fully because everybody's different everybody it's an individual endeavor and you do it to your own satisfaction not anybody else's so this is not a judgment on anybody but I find that uh, fighting through it well fighting through this is uh, you know, and, and doing it all 
in one shot is um, has some uh, parts to it that 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 bring a you know a higher uh, level of satisfaction for me. So. so we just passed the town of Tardajos, which is the uh, first opportunity to uh, sit down and have a coffee after you leave Burgos. I think it's like 10 kilometers outside of Burgos. And I actually, uh, I've been kind of keeping up with Joe today. He caught up to me. I left earlier than he did. And, um, and then he caught up to me. But he's uh, starting to adapt to the Camino life here. We are officially entering the Meseta. And uh, yeah, he's starting to kind of relax into it a little bit instead of charging to the next uh, destination. Um, we were sitting back there at the cafe having a little breakfast and uh, usually he uh, get, he finishes first and gets up and takes off but he was just sitting there relaxing and having a coke and uh, taking his time um, which is good um, you know taking time to sort of appreciate the quiet peaceful conditions here on the Camino. So anyway, he's behind me. We've got uh, 10 kilometers to go to get to Hornillos and it's only 1030 in the morning. That's an hour and a half walk and we'd be there by noon, which means we have a good shot at getting a bed. So hopefully we'll see. Well, this is the Meseta. There's a little church. I, uh, I'll post photos of it. Uh, just before you enter what I consider the start of the Meseta, this area, uh, you go in the little church, you get a blessing from the little lady in there. And uh, they always seem to be little, <laughs> little tiny ladies. Uh, they give you a blessing and, uh, and then you enter this. And it's amazing. That's it. I think I saw Joe coming up way behind me back there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat him today. He's kind of taking his time. I, I he's uh, getting over being sick. He's feeling good. I think he's just getting into the swing of uh, things and enjoying the, the walking and not real eager to uh, finish each day anymore, which is good. Uh, you want to get to where you're just sort of quiet and peaceful and walking at your pace, taking time at the cafes, you know, to uh, just sit and relax. And um, uh, things should thin out a bit here um, after Burgos because, you know, a lot of people don't, don't do this section. So here we are. Buddy. Here comes Joe. <laughs> hey, buddy.
morning. Hey. Oh boy, what you smelling? <laughs> Smells something. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're today is a short, really short day. I think it's 21 kilometers maybe um, to Reliejos. I think it's probably how it's pronounced which is a small town. I know there's a grocery store there somewhere, uh, but it's one of those towns where it's like a teeny, t yeah, I think it's right at the entrance of town and it's like this, it's, it's the size of a large walk-in closet, <laughs> so, as I remember, um, not a very big store. So, uh, just, and I think there's just a, one or two restaurants maybe in town, but a lot of people are staying there, at least a lot of people I've been walking with. As I mentioned uh, in other videos, uh, the the meseta is kind of where the Camino really, uh, you really settle in. Um, the first week is sort of scrambling to find beds and get used to, you know, sort of understand how it all works and, and you're excited to be here. It's kind of like being at a party and you're running around trying to meet everybody and, and, um, 
you know, and people are sort of coming and going and, and, and um, you don't quite have your, your group yet. Oh my God, he's there. This little guy walks this entire street and he's literally been here every day that I've been on the Camino. Every time I've been on the Camino, he's right here. It's like that um, deja vu thing in the Matrix. He's, he gets out here and he walks this uh, stretch of uh, roadway and um, he walks down here where I just came from and then he walks back. Unbelievable, and I comment, I, made, I think I made a video the last time in September that he was here and I thought it was my first, September, you know, it was my first time back um, after COVID and I had commented that this same guy was in the same spot three years earlier and here he is he's always got his little stick feeling his way along hola hola you've been here every time he's been, i've been here three times 2019 2022 and now he's here every time walks this road every day Well, good morning, guys. Um, we're, we just spent uh, two days in Lyon, two nights actually, a day and a half, and took a nice rest. Feels like forever since we've been walking, though. Uh, that's kind of what happens. You take a day off, and it just feels like you, you've uh, uh, been out for a week. Um, so this is the uh, uh, Museo de Leon. I've, I haven't been inside of it, but uh, uh, yeah, it's just sort of on the way out and it, it's not really open during the time we're walking. Oh look, here's Joe. Where is he? Oh, there he is. It's Joe. Yep. <laughs> Got a uh, new bottle, new beverage. Yep. So, how are we feeling? Oh, pretty all right. Feet good? Yeah. All righty. Okay. I'm heading to, uh, where are we going? Something San Martin. Or, um, uh, I mean, San see, Martin I, I, del Camino, something. Yeah, something I, like that. I didn't look at it. It's like 24 kilometers. And, uh, yeah, knees are getting better. That day off helped. And uh, we do have a reservation, so there's no hurry to get uh, to get there. We're all booked, and um, oh, there's maybe the museum is open. I don't know. I don't know that I need to see it. Um, so uh, yeah, so no hurry, and we're booked for the next two nights. Yeah, it's so. uh, San Martin del Camino. San Martin del Camino. That's where we're going. So we're uh, yeah, we're on our way out of Leon. Coming into Hospital de Orbigo.
so uh, my knees are getting seem to be getting a little better little by little which is is good um, you know they hurt if uh, you know they hurt after walking on them for a little while but not as bad as not nearly as bad as they did in the beginning uh, that first week was uh, kind of very painful uh, and I really wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do the walk um, you know this trips more um, about Joe and, and for his benefit than mine um, I've completed it several times so um, I'm not quite as obsessed with doing it completely without taking a bus or a taxi. Um, I, uh, my, typically, I would be here and I just sort of, I make a commitment that I don't, I won't get in a vehicle. Oh, there's a little baby pig drowned in the river. Huh. Yeah, I think he's gone. And if I'd been here, I could have saved him. But, uh, yeah, it looks like we couldn't get back up out of there. Although it's not very deep. Well, I don't know how long he's been there, but he looks pretty much gone. So, uh, anyway. <coughs> the, um, yeah, so. The, um, yeah, the first week, you know, basically, I, I came into the Camino. My knees have been giving me trouble since February, and I can, you know, I was. It started when I started uh, kind of training, you know, doing some not not very long walks, five to ten miles, um, and uh, it's you know, I started getting kind of these sharp pain on the inside of kind of the lower inside of my knee uh, and I didn't know what it was at first they would swell up you know the whole joint would swell up and I couldn't bend it uh, like full of fluid or something and um, so the uh, yeah so I wasn't sure what it was and it just and I kept thinking well it'll go away if I just kind of walk it off and it didn't and then um, and then I thought maybe if I rest it for a few weeks and I, so I did that, I took, you know, a couple of weeks off and didn't really do any walking, uh, pr you know, just prior to coming. And, um, and I thought that might fix it. And then after the first day of walking, it was pretty clear that it, that it, that wasn't going to do it. You know, they just kind of swelled right back up and it was painful and, and the second day of walking was very hard and um, I just remember uh, you know Joe kind of walks fast so he took off and I thought you know I can I can always just hop in a taxi at some point if it's if the pain's too bad and, um, and it's not a big deal because I've completed this several or a couple of times that you know did a winter time one where I did only did half of half of it but, um, but I've completed it twice and I've done it to you know to my satisfaction where I sort of commit to not taking any vehicles I walk it the whole way uh, you know and, and so I've done that twice and so this time wasn't as important this one's about Joe uh, about getting him out here getting him to see a bigger world and and uh, meet people from all over and uh, hear the different languages, things that he's interested in, you know, and experience the history and the, these old churches and things that, that he's always had an interest in and that he's only ever read about on the internet. And it's, uh, you know, it was not really critically important because I've, I've done it to my own satisfaction a couple of times. So, um, but I, I do tend to, uh, um, you know, push my own limits to the point where 
I'd really have to be, you know, really incapable of walking. It, it, you know, the pain, it's weird. Uh, you know, when you're in the middle of pain, you sort of just rationalize it, like I do. And you just say, yeah, that hurts, and I'll, you know, I'll take something for it. And, but you just keep taking one step at a time, and eventually you, you get to the place you're going to stay. And, you know, it's just like an incredible relief when you can finally, uh, you know, lay down on your bed and take the weight off of it. And, you know, and then you get up and you do it again the next day. Um, if I had to think I'm going to walk through this pain for the next 33 days or whatever number of days was left, I wouldn't have done it. I would have just said, yeah, there's no way. Um, but you take it, you know, one day at a time, one town at a time, you know, you think I can, you know, I can sort of limp my way to the next cafe and get the weight off of it and then I'll when I, you know, in 2018, what was I, uh, uh, 50 years old, I guess. Um, and, uh, thinking, yeah, I'll just get through 15 more years and then I can retire and then I can do what I want to do. And, uh, but no, <laughs> you know, when you start having health problems, you may not be around in 15 years for one thing. And the other thing is you may not be able to walk even, you know, and you're, um, and then you think, what's, you know, what the hell? <laughs> so that's kind of the scary part about my, my knees is that suddenly it just came out of nowhere and suddenly I can't walk anymore. And um, yeah, so then I'm thinking, what, what do I do now? Yeah. I haven't seen too many uh, pilgrims out here in a while. I know I'm on the right road. So we're getting a late start leaving Astorga, but it's a short walk today and we have a reservation so. There's where, there's where we stayed, the Hotel Gaudi. Uh, sort of an old hotel with a lot of wood, you know, wood floors and everything. And uh, sort of has some uh, personality, I guess, some charm. And it's uh, right here close to the cathedral and uh, the Gaudi Museum. We're not sticking around. Uh, if we were staying an extra day, I might encourage Joe to see all this stuff, but we're not, we're not staying. We took a rest day in Lyon, so don't need to. Well guys, this is, uh, well, that's the um, cathedral in Astorga, there. And we're leaving Astorga today, and um, heading to a town called Rabinal. I think Rabinal del Camino is probably what it is. 
Joe's uh, he made a run to the grocery store. Got to get his uh, chocolate croissant or something. And he'll uh, catch me in a minute. And um, yeah, short day today, but 20 kilometers. We are pre-booked, so we're getting a late start. Uh, it's like 9.30 or 10. <laughs> this is like incredibly late to be uh, starting walking, but uh, we only have a full, about a four hour walk. Um, I have a baguette in my pack, so I don't need to stop anywhere. And, uh, and uh, so it still puts us, puts us to our destination by about uh, one o'clock, something like that one, but probably before two anyways. Hopefully before two or they'll give our reservation away. That would be bad because Rabinal is a difficult one to get. <laughs> so anyway, see you on the, see you on the road. Hey, buddy. Come here. <laughs> Here's a rare sight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm walking with Joe. Yep. And keeping up with him. For now. <laughs> uh oh, yep. I shouldn't have said anything. Now he's turning on the high gear. <clears throat> Gotta go. <laughs> nice view. Yeah. Um, the uh, the day uh, cruise de Ferro, you know, I've always considered this to be sort of a, you know, an individual day. Um, you know, you're gonna climb up. It's something. Uh, what is it? Nine kilometers, ten kilometers. You're gonna hike up this hill, and uh, and you're gonna drop the rock you've been carrying uh, at the cross. And there's usually some pretty emotional people up there. Uh, people have had whatever, some people have had traumas in their life, lost family members. And um, this walk is, you know, about that. And so um, you try to, you know, I try to tone, tone things down a little bit. It's like going to church, you don't, you know, start dancing around and blasting music at the cross. You let people have their their moment. And um, I don't have that much going on at this point in my life. Just um, most of my traumas are in the past. At least, the, at least the, the ones that I've had to deal with are pretty much done and uh, dealt with. Um, my first Camino was uh, somewhat emotional, um, still dealing with things, and um, you know, so uh, a lot of that Camino was spent talking about, um, well, I'm not going to get into it, <laughs> but, because it's been dealt with, so, uh, but anyways, I had my my uh, issues at that point and that's and I literally spent just about every day you know talking to a new person and every conversation led to the same same place trying to uh, you know figure things out and trying to you know get these purge these uh, emotions and uh, and um, the problem is uh, mostly in Life, no one wants to hear it. That's why we pay people to listen to us. We go to therapists and you have to pay someone to listen to you because nobody wants to hear it. And, uh, you know, letting things go is not, a, is not just a, it's not just a decision. You don't just decide, I think I'll let this go now. That's just, that's just lying to yourself. Am I on, why am I on uh, this again on the same day I was? in 2019. Anyway, I'm going to have to delete this. All right, cruise to Faro Day.
Oh, this humidity is high. <laughs> humidity is so high, my glasses are fogging up. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi. Got a shirt on your head. That's a this is interesting. Crazy. Hey, buddy. Thunderstorms. Let's see. I still got a little ways to go heading to Villafranca del Dierzo. And, uh, oh. Not looking good. So, I'm supposed to be walking through the fields, but, um, we got a lightning storm, thunderstorm, pretty ominous, um, and uh, under going through the fields, you're walking under all these power lines. I had to change my shirt. I'm gonna put my rain jacket on and maybe wait till the worst of this stops. So uh, yeah, it's pretty bad out there, and I got a few kilometers left to go. I don't mind. Uh, being wet so much, it's the uh, lightning that's uh, bothering me a little bit. So, there goes a guy on a motorcycle. He doesn't seem scared. I'm, I, I feel okay now. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I got a few kilometers left. I was supposed to go through the fields um, where all the grapevines are. That's the nicer walk. But it seemed like the rain was going to come down really hard, <coughs> and it was going to get muddy fast. And there's a lot of like hills and mud and, and stuff. And then also overhead were these high power, uh, high, those high power lines. Um, and they were everywhere. And I was sitting there trying to figure out if that's safer to walk under those. Maybe those somehow protect me from the lightning or if somehow that like magnifies the lightning's power. So, I don't know which. It looks like it's slowing down, so I'm going to start walking again and see how much longer I have to go. Well, that was a heck of a lightning storm. The sun's coming out. Still some clouds. Boy, look at this. Flip that around. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much past. I think. Yeah, I'm the only one out here. It's almost five o'clock. This is like really late to be walking. <laughs> but I'll end up doing 33 kilometers today. I got a late start and I didn't walk that fast. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, and I took the, uh, long way. I should have followed Joe. He knew where he was going. But I'm on the path. Uh, during the lightning storm, I took that road, uh, because it was a more direct route. The roundabout way goes through those hills back there. And, uh, the, uh, with the lightning and the power lines overhead, I just wasn't sure if that's the way I should do it or not. But uh, anyway, I took the road, it was a little more direct. And then I came upon that bus shelter and it was all fine. I'm still here. So uh, yeah, it's nice out here. I've got about th three kilometers to go. And that should take me about 30 minutes or so.
Hello. except it was some like 20 degrees Celsius hotter. Actually doing pretty good here. In some ways my legs are a lot stronger than they were last time. Uh, my knees are the have been the problem this trip, but they don't you they don't feel too bad on the on the uphill. In fact they don't feel bad at all and my legs uh, in general are stronger than that than the last two times I was here. So but boy it's steep and uh, I'm glad we got an early start. I remember last year it was September and I was coming through here in the, in the uh, mid afternoon and it was hot and I was having a lot of trouble. Sabrero. Hey, buddy. Look who's here. Hey, hang on. Flip that around. up to this in the morning.
heading to um, Tria Castella today. Here's a nice view. Uh, Tria Castella. It's, uh, I think it's like 21 kilometers. And uh, we're just leaving O Sobrero. So uh, we had a great day yesterday, had a nice hike up. Um, not too long. We actually got there so early, we just, there's not much to do there. So. And we stayed, uh, we stayed in the municipal albergue. And um, I should have just got us a private room. But uh, I don't know, we sort of had it planned. I couldn't get a booking. Uh, a pre-booking and so we sort of decided to stay in the municipal and then sometimes you just don't think things through but I, I could have gotten a private room and that might have been better um, but we've been staying in a lot of private rooms um, since the meseta because you just start to you know need some space and then you start to feel a little detached from the Camino um, and you sort of lose the spirit of it and um, I was starting to feel that and I was thinking maybe Joe was gonna start feeling it too and and so I had sort of thought yeah we need to get back into a communal sleeping situation so we reconnect with everyone and um, but in Osobrero we were there so early it might have been better to just get a private room uh, I would have given us a place to just kick back and relax. Um, but uh, it was all right. I slept all right. And and, uh, and you wake up to these amazing views in the morning. And, uh, we're kind of out here. I don't know if everybody's ahead of us or behind us, but there's not that many people on the trail right now. So, uh, oh, here's Joe. Taking off one of his layers. He'll catch up to me and pass me quickly. So uh, anyway, yeah, heading to Tria Castella today. Uh, should be a nice day, nice walk. Clear skies for now. And uh, see you guys there. Hey guys. Hola. Hey.
I'm just sitting here at the uh, entrance. I haven't, I haven't gone in yet. I'm waiting for Joe. Uh, I left uh, quite a while before him because uh, I wanted, because he's so much faster than me. I wanted to make sure I was here when when he walked in, so I could maybe get some video of it. <laughs> but the bagpipes playing in the background there, and uh, I'm just sitting here. Uh, waiting to, uh, he, he said he was about a kilometer away like five minutes ago, so that's, uh, he's probably only a few minutes away. And, um, and uh, so, um, yeah, I just want to uh, wait till he gets here. Boy, and it's just started pouring down rain, like in the last couple minutes. Oh, we did it. Ha, ha, ha. 